Well, well, all indications suggest maybe this week. The closest thing to a tentative date from Elon Musk was a tweet that stated, was just informed that approval to launch should happen in time for a Friday launch. This puts things at a 90% certainty that Starship will fly as SpaceX plans. Other clues like space launch activities closure for November 17th or the 18th or even the 19th from 0 hours to 1400 hours means SpaceX has up to 14 hours each day. But maybe the strongest indication of an impending launch was an email to press and photographers to apply for remote camera setup on Thursday the 16th of November 2023. Should they not launch until the 22nd, they cannot launch from the 23rd to the 26th, as detailed by the final PEA summary. But even this has to be taken with a grain of salt because of still pending regulatory approvals by the Federal Aviation Administration and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services. In fact, there is an old adage that says you can't force a grape to ripen, and so it is with Starship. However, to avoid unnecessary things that hinder it, Representative Tony Gonzalez and Representative Vincente Gonzalez, not related, are calling for the Fish and Wildlife Service to conclude its review of the company's plans for a second launch from South Texas. Two South Texas congressmen sent a letter Friday to agency director Martha Williams calling for a timely environmental review of the company's launch operations. The United States is currently in a space race with the rest of the world, and the federal government should not hinder public companies as they develop and push the United States to remain a leader in the space exploration realm. The congressman wrote, It is of the utmost importance that the FWS makes their environmental review decision sooner rather than later. It's the last regulatory hurdle SpaceX has to clear before the Federal Aviation Administration can issue a new launch license. The letter is the latest sign of growing pressure from SpaceX to return to flight after the FAA grounded Starship in the aftermath of an April 20th flight that revealed serious safety and environmental concerns with its operations. SpaceX has said it's ready to go, but is awaiting clearance. Gonzalez, a San Antonio Republican, and Gonzalez, a McAllen Democrat, said the regulatory delay greatly impacts SpaceX's operations in South Texas and potentially hurts the region's economy. SpaceX is one of the largest employers in the Rio Grande Valley, employing over 1,700 people, and it's a major economic driver in the area Area, they wrote. A further delay in the environmental review will continue to harm the small businesses and tourism industry of South Texas. The Fish and Wildlife Service must conclude its consultation under the Endangered Species Act before the FAA will complete its environmental review of the launch license evaluation. The Wildlife Service reinitiated its consultation on October 19th, and the agency has up to 135 days to issue an amended biological opinion. Agency spokeswoman Aubrey Busek said last month. That would take it to early March, but she said the agency did not expect to take the full amount of time. NASA officials have also been chiming in about Starship's return to flight. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said, It is essential to us that SpaceX be able to test their rocket. I am given to believe that they are going to get the approval of fish and wildlife and therefore the FAA. I don't know the timing, but of course, a major delay will be a very considerable concern to NASA, he continued. Coordination among SpaceX and the various local state and federal entities also has continued. Representative Tony Gonzalez, a retired Navy cryptologist, said he's majorly focused on space. He held the space portfolio during his time as a Department of Defense fellow for then-Senator Marco Rubio. Gonzalez has also built connections with Musk. In late September, he met with the tech mogul in Eagle Pass to discuss border 
issues. All this will help Elon Musk's fishing license arrive as soon as possible, hopefully. And when that day finally arrives, let's count down the flight test timeline. The process of loading the propellants, liquid oxygen, and liquid methane will commence an hour and 37 minutes prior to launch. As the countdown progresses at the South Texas Starbase facility, the Raptor engines on both the Super Heavy booster and Starship will undergo a pre-launch procedure known as an engine chill, commencing at T-19 minutes and 40 seconds. This process is crucial for conditioning the engines to handle the super cold propellants during ignition and flight. The flame deflector will kick in at T-10 seconds, with the Raptor ignition sequence beginning at T-3 seconds, a modification from the previous T-8 will damage to the launch infrastructure caused by the engine's intense power. Two seconds after the mission begins, the rocket will lift off from the pad, marking the start of its ascent. Max Q, the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure, is expected to occur T plus 52 seconds. This phase challenges the structural integrity of the rocket as it travels through the atmosphere at increasing speeds. At T plus 2 minutes and 30 seconds, an event, termed MECO, or Most Engines Cut Off, will occur. Yes, you heard that right. This is a variation of the traditional main engine cutoff, signifying the point when, presumably, a majority of the Raptor engines will shut down. Following this, at T plus 2 minutes and 53 seconds, the booster will initiate its boost back burn startup. This maneuver involves a flip of the booster, setting it up for a rapid descent back to Earth. As part of this test flight, the booster will simulate a landing in the Gulf of Mexico, which is expected to happen around the 7-minute mark. This procedure is a precursor to future tests in which the booster will return to the Boca Chica site for vertical landings. The two-stage Starship is meant to be a fully reusable rocket launch system. Meanwhile, the Starship upper stage will continue along its journey, performing an engine cutoff at 8 minutes and 33 seconds. Its path will take it over the Caribbean, South Southern Africa, the Indian Ocean, and New Guinea before making a planned splashdown in the Pacific near Hawaii. A critical phase of this journey will be the re-entry maneuver at 1 hour and 17 minutes, followed by a simulated ocean landing at the 90 minute mark. It's important to note that Starship will not complete a full orbit of Earth during this mission. The success of each of these phases and stages, especially the hot staging and the re-entry maneuvers, will be closely monitored, as they are crucial for the overall objectives of the test flight. Key questions include whether the 16 million pounds of thrust produced by the Raptor your engines will damage the launch mount despite the water deluge system if all 33 Raptor engines ignite successfully, whether SpaceX will achieve hot staging on its first attempt, and if Starship can survive re-entry. SpaceX will take whatever happens with its second mission, learn from it, and use those lessons to improve the third. The idea that problems will arise is practically a certainty, given the company's devotion to rapid iterative development, an approach that's been the basis for all of SpaceX's major innovative advancements, including Falcon, Dragon, and Starlink, according to the company. Excitement guaranteed, Elon Musk promised for the first launch of Starship 24 and Booster 7, and he didn't disappoint. The level of excitement as well as the rush of experiencing the first Starship launch fueled an addiction. An addiction that now craves excitement guaranteed as promised again by Musk. The anticipation and excitement of the unknown is a visceral pulse throbbing rhythm beating go, go, go. Musk views Mars as the most viable option for establishing a self-sustaining colony that could safeguard humanity in the event of a catastrophe on Earth. The Red Planet offers a wealth of opportunities for scientific research from studying its geology and climate to searching for signs of past or present life. Establishing a human presence on Mars could dramatically accelerate our 
understanding of the red planet, as well as the broader solar system. The journey to Mars represents one of the greatest technological challenges of our time. For Musk, overcoming the myriad of engineering and logistical hurdles to make Mars travel possible is a worthwhile endeavor that can drive innovation and lead to advancements in many fields, including new propulsion systems, life support, and habitat construction. To give people something to look forward to, something that inspires them. The adventure of going to Mars is a compelling narrative that has the potential to unite and excite people around a common goal of exploration and discovery. Establishing a human presence on Mars could potentially open up new economic frontiers. In the future, there is potential for Mars to have its own industries, economies, and even tourism. Last but not least is Musk's personal legacy, preserving his interest in space and in the importance of space exploration. His work with SpaceX and the push to Mars is a significant part of his personal ambitions to impact the future of humanity. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you'd like to support our channel even further, you can go on ahead and hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up to become a patron today so you'll gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.